Thought leaders and decision makers gathered in Cape Town this week to share knowledge in what they call a State of the World Conference on Natural Disaster Risk Assessment. We discussed a risk with Francois Gesquier, head World Bank's Global Facility for Disaster Reduction, and Jonathan Kamkwalala, Sector Manager for the World Bank African Region Water Resources Management. There's been quite a lot of uh, progress on innovation uh, in disaster risk management. Uh, there's been quite a lot of uh, 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 advances uh, in um, looking at uh, ways in which uh, we can predict uh, disasters over the uh, uh, globally, and also in looking at uh, more information that can help policymakers and uh, uh, decision makers in making decisions on how to reduce or mitigate risks. And this uh, forum this week in Cape Town is looking at uh, ways in which we can share information on um, uh, global uh, risk management and look at how uh, policymakers and governments can use this information to mitigate risks. So this is a gathering of uh, 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 policymakers, uh, NGOs and government officials to share information on, uh, uh, and knowledge on uh, reducing and mitigating risk uh, uh, that uh, are caused by disasters. Francis, I want to come to you. Um, I was reading a report that was saying that one of the major challenges when it comes to risk and disaster management was that how to bridge the gap between scientists, policymakers, and communities. Is that something that is getting better or is that, does that continue to be a really huge challenge where you're working? Well, I think there's huge progress, Hannah. Um, fact, a little known fact about a disaster is that in fact we can more or less predict where they're likely to occur. There's been uh, huge advances in science, in earth sciences, in, in uh, engineering. We know uh, which area of the world are prone to earthquake, which one are subject to cyclones or floods. We also uh, now have a good understanding of how infrastructures and population uh, are affected by, this, by these adverse natural events. And so we're now able to, to in fact, model uh, the likelihood of, of uh, adverse, adverse impact of these events on, on population. It's true that there's a challenge of translating uh, this information in a way that really can drive policy, can help mayors and, and, and government uh, make the right decision in mitigating this risk or be at least ready to respond when it happens. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we're uh, meeting uh, here in Cape Town is to discuss how can we better uh, provide this information, how can we better guide uh, decision makers in either reducing and if it's not, uh, not possible to completely eliminate the likelihood of disaster at least be better able to respond. Jonathan, I want to come to you though. Um, so, so we're getting better at predicting it, but in terms of response, on the African continent, are our governments and our communities responding in time so that if a disaster is coming, you do have the prediction that it's coming, that the response is in time, that we don't have the loss of lives or the, or the kind of, of, of detriment that happens when, when a disaster does strike? I think the Africa region has made quite a lot of progress uh, in predicting disasters. Uh, first, it's important to uh, understand that a lot of the disasters uh, in the Africa region are water related. Uh, either there is uh, too much water which is cause, causes floods or too little water that causes um, uh, uh, droughts. And as you know, we've been dealing with the drought in the Horn of Africa and uh, also more recently in the Sahel. Information has been available uh, to, uh, to government officials about uh, the impending disasters. It's a matter of putting this information into their hands so that they can make uh, the right uh, decisions at the right time. But uh, that information is there. It's a matter of actually sensitizing the governments and the uh, stakeholders to ensure that uh, they use that information effectively and make the right decisions. The South African Maritime Industry Conference kicked off in Cape Town this week. It sought to examine the key trends affecting Africa's maritime and shipping sector. Lindsay Williams spoke to the South African Maritime Safety Authority CEO, Commander Tietzi Mukhele, about the significance of the maritime sector to the South African economy. SAMSA is the Maritime Authority for South Africa. Uh, which means that uh, it's got two clearly defined uh, mandates. 
One is a, is a mandate on ensuring safety at sea, safety of the environment, safety of people, safety of ships. Mm. The second mandate is the promotion of the Republic's maritime interest, which obviously would include even global uh, economic matters. And SAMIC itself, the conference, what do you hope to achieve from these uh, couple of days you've got at the CTICC? I think we, well, what, what we have already achieved is the ability to, to bring people together who otherwise have never met before. If you look at the maritime sector in South Africa, it was an undefined sector. There's no category of, 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 of maritime anyway, whether status A or the way we, we contribute towards the economy. So SAMIC is bringing together the total maritime sector to then look at the issues of how to revitalize and improve on its contribution towards the issues of economic growth and development. And where we're at now, we're still at the early stage of, of our conference, but looking at the room, there's a big uh, stakeholder coming from the private sector, the, the funders, the, the state from, from many departments. So we're therefore looking forward to quite a robust engagement on how to develop the maritime sector where it can contribute better to, to the GDP of the country. Mm -hmm. I was going businesses. to ask you that. Can you give us an idea of exactly how much the maritime industry, the maritime economy, contributes to the Western Cape economy, for example, where we are now, and to the broader South African economy? South Africa's uh, wealth is, is built on the back of, of trade. 60% mm -hmm. of our GDP comes out of trade. If, if, if that is a factor of, of, of our GDP, it would then be interesting that 98% of our total trade is handled by shipping. Mm. You know, so we only trade 2% via other modes of transport, but 98% comes through shipping. So just working with the numbers is highly significant. But if you bring in elements of marine tourism, the oil and gas industry in the sea, if you bring in fishing, if you bring in the marine manufacturing and all of those components, so maritime would actually be highly, highly significant as a GDP percentage. What we are working on now is to then be able to tie that as a sector together with all its elements and all its, uh, its, its, its calculations of its impact on the economy. But South Africa's economy is built purely on the back of trade, and that trade is seaborne trade. Well, that's all for this edition of Africa This Week.